we are here we are hello on the youtubes and hello here on instagram as well um it's wednesday thank the lord because what else would we be doing on our wednesday evenings it is history after dark so everybody is here hopefully all three of us are here on the youtubes um everyone is coming in on instagram we've already had loads of comments coming in on youtube so thank you all so much we actually can't keep up with them it's absolutely fantastic so cat has sent me a request to come in oh in fact so is philippa we're doing very well today. This, this is all rather marvellous. This is all rather... I'm, I'm waiting to see now if the technology actually works, though, because it is me. <clears throat> so, you know, there's always a possibility at, at any given moment. Oh, oh. Heidi, hi, campers. Yeah. Hello. At the same time as well. Yes. We both came in at the same time. We came together. <laughs> we did. Normally we do that at the end, but today we've got in Which first. Is, it's the best anyone can, and I can hope for, really. But <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to quick. Go ahead, otherwise, do it. Do quick. it. Do it. Quick. Quick. Quickly, friends. friends. Good evening. Welcome. It's Wednesday. It's just gone quarter past eight of the GMT of the BST, and this is history after dark. We called it that because we made it in winter when it was at this time dark, as it currently is. But in summer, it will not be. But it will still be an appropriate name for we do like to partake and report the history uh, as much as possible as far as we know it. We like to import some information and facts, but whilst doing so, we like to be resting in the gutter, um, bogging down in the mire of the filth and the depravity altogether, essentially grouping together and leading each other down the garden path of filth. Mm. Thusly, we have a disclaimer. If you happen to be in an open plan office with a judgmental boss, put a headphone in. Alternatively, if you are in a car, a kitchen or a living room or other space with a small child, this child is called Timmy in our minds. Timmy is a problem. Timmy, friends, is a dobber. Timmy is the sort of child that hears a thing once, doesn't say anything at the time, keeps it, stores it right in the back of the brain, takes him to school with him the next day, tells his teacher what mummy was listening to last night or indeed daddy or nanny, whoever's listening. And thus you get caught up to school. What on earth? I didn't know what this thing meant. So then I Googled it. Another thing to remember, friends, if you don't know what it means, don't Google it. Never Google it. It's never going to be a good place and you will end up on a watch list. <laughs> if you want one of those things to happen, put a headphone in. Alternatively, if you can't put a headphone in, you can watch on the playback, both on the YouTubes and the Instagram. I say that it's always worth watching us live because there may be a time, as there has been once in the past, where we happen to say something so unspeakably awful, so borderline illegal and definitely cancerably offensive that we have to yeet that footage <laughs> into the sun. That's happened one time. It's been a while, which either means we have vastly improved or we are due for another. We were close last week. We were... Was it last week? We were pretty close. <laughs> we were edging towards <laughs> a spectacular finish. Um Everyone would have been screaming, toes in the air. Um, so, everyone be good. <clears throat> Don't Google it. And this is not a drinking game. This will never be a drinking game. We will never approve this as a drinking game. If you want to play your own bingo, no shots, friends. Or if you are, that's on you. We don't approve the message. There we go. Okay. Oh, also, it's time for a git, isn't it? It is. We're gitting. It's git week now. We, we are going to be... Uh, it's <laughs> We're going to be interested in what you made of this one because... We're not sure, are we? Mm, so we're going to see no. what you all think. We want you want uh, to, lots of comments. We've got comments and stuff coming in on both um, forums, platforms, whatever you want to call them already. Um, I think it was Paige who said she's glad her boss is deaf. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what her boss thinks about that, but um, there you go, potato, potato. Um, so here we are. Here we are once again. Now, this week's kit of choice is John Knox. Mm. who's a Scottish reformer and the mm. father of Presbyterianism. Now, I didn't know much about this guy. I'm going to be honest. I'd heard the name and I'd heard, and as I was doing my first bit of research, I was like, oh, yeah, I recognise this. <laughs> really, really interesting, actually. Mm. So they've all been interesting. I'm, I'm not like trying to say, oh, this kid was boring, because, but I really did. That This is a guy I didn't know much about and I have found him really, really interesting. So um, hopefully you will all feel the same. Um, you will. Better. Oh, yeah so um we've had to do this a little bit differently this week so generally the format we've had as you know is kind of done sort of uh, what is it 
starty bits, middly bits, bits, middly bits, 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 leggy bits, endy bits, leggy leggy bits. So there isn't really much about starty bits because from what we can kind of make out, because this guy was a sort of very, very fervent reformer, he didn't really, anything that happened before the Reformation to him just didn't count. (laughs) So it's just like, eh. And a lot of what we know about what happened in his life was written by him. Mm. So um, we are obviously being careful of like um, biases and, and things like that. But it, it, it really is quite interesting. And that his sources aren't the only sources. So how we're we doing it this week is we are all still doing a chunk each, but we've had to do it slightly differently. And there is so much to this that once again, we can't cover absolutely anything. So we've had to do selected highlights. <laughs> Um, so you can make your decision in the end on level of gittishness and mm-hmm. see see where you think. Mm. So Lisa says it is a drinking game. I've got Malibu and pineapple. Well, it's on your head. It's on your oh, reno system, yet. mate. It's on your reno system. <laughs> so, yeah. Good luck tomorrow, <laughs> babe. There's good fruit luck. involved. So she's got 12 of her five a day, depending on what she's picked to drink. 12 of her five a day. <laughs> Catherine, Catherine Brooks is not a nutritionist. Just putting that out there. Um, <laughs> she d- don't. You say that. She's I did do a nutrition course many, many years ago. When and I you're really sure it's a personal trainer. I don't yeah. apply any of it. response is, well, there's fruit in it, babe. That's babe. why it's okay to eat chocolate-covered raisins. Go oh, dear. <laughs> fruit, in it? In it. It's a sugar with sugar. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's cool. sugar. With natural sugars. Natural anyway, sugar with other sugar on it. With other sugar, just to make yeah. sure. Mm. Um, right, so Philippa is doing the early bits that aren't really early bits, so the firsty bits. The earliesty bits, the firsty bits. Yes, the firsty yeah. bits this week, the firsty yeah. bits. Comments as you need to, obviously, and we will pick up as many as we can. Go. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering why, why is uh, Claire, I, if I hear another English person say five a day, why? why because no other country has it has that few. Uh Oh, that few. Yeah. yeah. I know mean, yeah. the country has that, that few. It like ridiculous. saying it's one of your five a day, like that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. Like five <laughs> is the target. Yeah. Five should be your absolute minimum if you want to. I mean, that's like, because this is England the and we're shit at everything. So <laughs> but we're not bad at growing vegetables. So, like, we should be able to. Oh, well, not these days, apparently. Yeah. Uh, uh, Although, standard. apparently, our vegetables, if you compare like a broccoli from post world war ii to a broccoli now it has so much less nutrients in it mm. because we force the ground to grow so much so our, and we don't let our ground lay fallow to get the nutrients and minerals back in so we are eating more because our food is less nutritious mm-hmm. yeah so the moral <coughs> of that story is only buy broccoli from the 1950s yes yeah. <laughs> yes Oh, you, yeah, you, yeah. Want, you want my time machine now, don't you? Yeah, well, just to go back and get broccoli. <laughs> go back and get broccoli. I've tried wearing broccoli. It takes a lot of space. See, it's not though. practical. Bro- it's broccoli not practical. in the year 2023 is very impractical. <laughs> so just so that you all know, so chocolate-covered raisins. Anyway, the, the, fir- the first few bits of John Locke's the first two bits of John Knox. So John Knox is actually born around about 1514, just to put him in context. He's born in East Lothian, Scotland. He is Scottish. That's that's mm-hmm. that's key to his Fact story. Confirm. <laughs> <laughs> he had Stop. an accent and Scottish. everything. So <laughs> no, um, actually, no, apparently he didn't. Well, I don't he know. He didn't. Oh. Apparently, I was watching some dude today whose yeah. channel's really good. I'll have to look it up for anybody who might be interested in it. He said apparently he didn't have a Scottish accent. Well, that's, that's all I can tell you. I can't expand on that. That's exactly what I thought. I thought, well, I feel let down now. That's, that's, <laughs> it's a bit that's, like, yeah. um, I'll have to get in contact with this guy and ask him how he knows that. Yeah, was he there? Has he got a time <laughs> machine? Has he got your time machine? If he's got a time machine, I'm afraid I'm binning you two off for him. <laughs> Whatever. You, we won't let you, you anywhere near much to leave. You love us too much to leave. You're addicted. <laughs> So he's, he's, he's Scottish, with or without a Scottish accent. Who knows? <laughs> yes. We weren't there. Um, yeah. But we, we we do, like Catherine said, we know almost nothing about his life before about 1540, um, which is, so he's already about, yeah, he's already in his mid to late 20s by the time we really know much about him. And that 
as well, Catherine said, is down possibly to, mainly down to the fact that what we do know of him is in his own writings, mm -hmm. and he didn't really write about life before um, his conversion to Protestantism. So, um, uh, but in his, around his late it, 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 his late twenties, he does um, he <laughs> does. <laughs> it does go into priest orders um and and he's he's working in the church in around 1543 he's known to be doing that but he becomes a tutor um to to the sons of um i haven't got their names but two gentlemen in east lothian uh, who are very involved in the reformation movement and um and through them he meets a man called George Wishart, presuming that's how you, how you pronounce it, who is a, a Reformation leader. And, um, and he becomes, so, so he, 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 by virtue of them being involved with, with, with this guy called George Wishart and, and the, uh, what, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Just Pretty, pretty pick. pick was one of the students, Timmy. Probably, <laughs> probably. Even well, back then, causing shit. Well, I mean, if he was if he was a Timmy, he probably wouldn't have enjoyed much time with with John Knox. He he <laughs> was, I think, a, as were so many people, a, a firm believer in sparing the rod, spoiling the mm -hmm. child. So mm -hmm. he's so he's yeah so he so so John Knox is introduced or he's around this guy called George Wishart. Um, I've said that three times now. Um, and it's important. It's important. Is is his name? I don't know whether to call him George or Wishart. Because I can't decide which one I want to call him now. Well, he's um, going to be dead soon, so I wouldn't he worry. Is, he actually is. He actually is. <laughs> Catherine's just perfectly, but basically. <laughs> I thought he might still be alive today. I can't remember the that. next like 15 seconds, but like okay, well basically so second spoiler, he's actually dead in real life too. He is dead in real life too. All of them are actually. Uh oh, a shame. No. Except for except for um It's not a shame for all of them. Except for one guy. But I was gonna say he trained for the priesthood under John Major, who did become the British Prime Minister. And that's <laughs> different <laughs> different John and Major. He's still alive. No, it's definitely the same one, yeah. He looks like he's been around for a while. Um <laughs> He's got a time Smog, keeping the crypt. <laughs> Nosferatu. <laughs> anyway, getting off track. So he, anyway, so he, 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 he goes. He undergoes a full sort of conversion to to the Reformed faith, um, and and he really seems to have, you know, he, re he really sort of sees Wishart as, um, I don't know, he he he, he reveres him. And 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 as Catherine's already said, Wishart <laughs> dies, but he dies, <laughs> and and Knox ruined it. it not, yeah, ruined it. And Knox, um, you know, he, he he refers back to him. He he sort of keeps his memory alive. And but Wishart was um, burned for heresy in March of fifteen forty six by Cardinal Beaton. That sets off mm -hmm. um, a chain of events that mm -hmm. affect Knox's life massively Knox at this point is just wanting to be a tutor he's um he's converted he's he's just, you know he's fully into this but he's just a tutor and this is really what he wants to remain doing or remain he, he would like a quiet life that's not how it's going to um to work out for him but Cardinal um Beaton so he he has um like I say he has wish up burn for heresy there's a revenge attack and um and Cardinal Beaton is is murdered by Protestant conspirators. <laughs> um, now, so this again, this is this, this like this chain of events. Now, what Knox really wants to do is go over to the continent. Now, he wants to go over to Germany and be able to study there and learn about this reformed faith over there. But his um, his employers, effectively the, the 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 parents of the of the two boys that he's ch uh, tutoring, say no. What I want you to do is you've got to take them <laughs> to St Andrews castle and this is where the um the, the the protestants had taken hold and they'd escaped to after murdering beaten basically and they're, they're they're hauled up in St andrew's castle so it becomes this um kind of center for for the protestant movement um so knox is told no you've got to go to St andrew's castle i want you to take you know you're going to take the boys there he's um he's there for 
three months. And his his brilliance is noted and he becomes a reluctant spokesperson for the Protestant movement. So I'm not quite sure how, <laughs> but he's recognised as sort of a man, maybe it's his, the way he thinks or something, but he's he is... Um, you know he, what he really wants to do is 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 study, tutor, that. But people have noticed him and they want him to be kind of their spokesperson. Um, and clearly, if you're going, the life of a preacher at this time in the Reformed faith is going to be personally very dangerous. So he's very reluctant to do it. However, he he begins to regard it as actually his calling from God. So although he doesn't personally want to be in the limelight although he personally never saw himself doing this he is a man of conviction and he is seeing this as his calling from god and then this is when he begins um uh preaching um now the um the castle in 1547 so this is later on in the same year that he gets there is um bombarded by the the, the Scots with the with the um, backing of the French and this play going on in the castle. It's not a very good time, and the castle falls. And Knox is taken into um, French custody. Basically, becomes a slave on French galleons for the next nineteen months. And it's only with the um, with the uh, intercedence of Edward the Sixth Protestant government that he is uh, he's. Um, saved i suppose because they're looking for protestant preachers for edward the sixth and and his and his government the reformation isn't happening fast enough so they want to employ a, basically an army of, of preachers to go out and and spread spread the word so he he basically comes and preaches in england um i noticed someone earlier put about did he marry a teenager well um he meets his future wife um four years uh, th i think four years earlier than he actually marries her so i unless he meets her when she's very young i don't know it does i, I haven't i didn't i didn't see how he does marry, he, he, marries her for, he does marry her for a second time and his i know his second wife is young ah maybe I, that's the second one then okay yeah i just want to flag up though that what you're describing there hearing it because he, I've, I've read it but hearing it actually said out loud I just want to flag up how similar that sounds to like biblical test stories, mm. you know, like a, like a test of faith, somebody who comes to faith, who is then, you know, tormented, enslaved, and then freed by a wise king. Like it's the, the kind of shaping of that is so you can see the parallels. Yes. Which is when it comes, when it becomes very interesting, like obviously if we sort of, I don't know. He's not someone I've spent a lot of time learning about. He comes in clearly with the stories of Elizabeth, the first Mary Queen of Scots, which we'll get on to. But him himself, I've not, um, you know, studied in any great, great way. And, and of course, he writes most of what we know about him. So mm. whether those parallel, like, but I mean, if it happened, it happened. You don't, you don't, you can't really make up going into slavery for 19 months. Well, apparently um, there's a story that when he was on the ship, because they, they, you know, the way they were treated, well, they presented him with a picture of, I want to say the Virgin Mary. So I'm sorry if I got that wrong, to try and get him to sort of praise it and kiss it and everything like that. Mm. So like, it's just sort of humiliation thing. And he threw it in the sea mm. and they didn't do it again. Now, that to me, in hindsight, sounds a little bit propagandary if it was coming from him. But that's the story, anyway. Mm. Mm. I mean, because considering the stuff that we actually hear about him doing, because I've, I've seen um, Beth on on the YouTube comments and said, "Was Mary Queen of Scots afraid of Knox?" That's a really interesting question. Mm. Um, she probably should have been. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that I we're going to go into this later, but I, I, yeah, I'm of the opinion that what you've got bit. there is is. Um, immovable objects, irrepressible force. Mm -hmm. That's what's happened. And they both should have been more scared of each other than they, than they were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this I think this is why it's important to understand that Knox is reticent. It, this is not someone who, I mean, I'm wondering actually, you know, it says, it says he had tears, you know, he was, he was sort of not, he was sort of forced to preach in a way. Mm. He really didn't mm. want to. And I'm wondering whether there's a little bit of stage fright. It's not, it's, I mean, it's not for everyone, is it? Standing up in front of people. <laughs> Especially when and, half those people want to kill you. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I think it's important to remember that. 
but then but then he because he, he sees it as uh, his calling from god and he and he clearly 100 percent is in on this he's like yeah this i'm down for this i i get it this is this is this is what i I, I get the whole package and this is what I believe. Um, but yeah, so he, he basically works for the English government for quite a while. Preaching over the country, he becomes one of um, six royal chaplains. Um, so um, he's offered um, he's offered the Bishopric of Rochester and the vicar, uh, Vicarage at All Hallows London, but he does refuse both of those. Um, but he, he, he had an impact on the Book of Common Prayer. He gets... Um, he gets it's called the black rubric i don't know about this but basically um which which is the bit that denies that um um that that the actual body or and blood of christ is present in the blood and and wine he also clarifies why kneeling is is permissible um because that that's a sort of bone of contention um in the in the sort of reforming movement is is kneeling revering uh, idol, you know, an idol, and therefore shouldn't be done. So he sort of puts a clarification in about that. Um, <clears throat> but of course, Edward the Sixth in England dies earlier than it, than expected, and you have Mary, who comes <clears throat> back to the throne, hell bent. Oh, probably wrong words. Full, fully bent on <laughs> on reinstigating Roman That's... Catholicism. <laughs> um, and uh, and. It's it, 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 and they're both sort of seeing it as true religion. Like he he, so he's concerned that on the whim of one person happens to be a woman, but on the whim of one person, a that all this good work can be undone. Um. So um. Yeah. So he. So he. He. I, I think he. He starts to. Oh, he starts to publish things we'll get on to onto the actual things he's published um with Catherine in a bit um but he then he doesn't he with that he then um he's one of the last but he escapes or flees to the continent and he spends lots of time in uh frankfurt with uh, john calvin well say a lot of time he didn't the first time he went it was only for a few months um um and he and he gets he comes back to Scotland then in 1559. That's when he marries his first wife. So I don't know about his second wife, sorry. But that's when he marries his first wife. She has two sons, um, but she dies only four years later. So he's not and he's not well, he's not married for that long to her, but also he's also skipping back to um to the continent. He spends time in Geneva, um, and um but sorry, I missed out a bit. When he goes back to Scotland, Protestantism has taken it, it. It's 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 made really good progress. It's different now. It, you know, it's, it's it's more accepted, sort of. Um, he goes back to Geneva, which he really really enjoys. This is where he. Um, well, it's around about this time that he starts publish. He publishes his um, the the most famous uh, of his uh, uh, publishings papers what would you call them i don't know the first last pamphlet. Trumpets. manuscripts pamphlets. manuscripts pamphlets you write stuff someone else prints you it anyway. you wrote <laughs> some stuff on some stuff so this, is, this, is, this is the first <laughs> blast of the trumpet against the monstrous regiment of women which Catherine will come what on a to. title i know That's it's it's, it's it's the first Just blast like... of the trumpet Perfect. It's audacious. It is audacious. It is. It is. It's yeah. audacious. I'm quite respecting the audacity of the title. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. you're going to go for it. You might as well go for it. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, of course, I mean, Catherine will get onto that bit. But um, yeah, so 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 he's he's a man who spends um, a, a lot of time. So he gets to go to the continent, which is kind of nice, because he clearly that was what he always wanted to do. But Protestantism starts to take um, a, a, a belting again back in Scotland. Um where in 1559, um, Mary of Guise calls uh, all the Protestant leaders to see her at uh, Stirling, um, and and Knox is recalled back um, by by the, the 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 Reformation movement leaders. He comes back and he he um, he, he 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 preaches at Perth. By this point, he's clearly very good at, uh, at at public speaking. He 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 delivers a sermon, and it is um it's 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 so I don't know powerful, vehement that it, it actually causes a riot. 
<laughs> uh, and and the local Ferraris are uh, sacked. So, <clears throat> um, so yeah, so, so he's he's a powerful leader in the Protestant Refor- in, movement in Scotland. Um, and I think probably if I go too much into this, we're going to start to overlap with what um, Catherine's going to talk about. So I'm going to leave it there because we've kind of got to the point where he's um, making his bookie works. He's making his bookie mm. works. Yeah. Yes. yes. A few people are saying on YouTube that the live stream is playing up, and I did notice that some people have moved from YouTube onto Instagram, but hopefully Ah. it will sort its life out. Now, before Mm. we come on to me talking about the middle bits, it's Philippa's word of the week. Oh, okay. Okay, so... Get ready. (laughs) <laughs> this one so i next time i'm going to choose one that you'll be able to use in conversation without the person knowing what you're saying this one that i'm afraid sneaky. Is, well i'm afraid this one's a little obvious um <laughs> but i quite like it it's a cockalorum if someone is a cockalorum they're a person with a high opinion of themselves um and so i want to know where where because we call people cocks if you've been a cock you know what does that mean yeah, and, yeah. and i say what's that got to do like where where does that come where does that come from and it is actually linked back to the idea of a cock a rooster i see another name for a, a rooster and that strut that they do around the <laughs> farmyard and their loud oh, no. triumphant like pa that's not really very cockle sounding but um yeah that that like brash self confident cock um, <laughs> we all we all know someone like it though we all we know <laughs> so so i mean so is that so we call people a cock but yeah so cockalorum i don't know why we need an extra bit um it's not really known where it comes from um it may have been derived from an obsolete flemish word cockalorum which means to crow um mm. so well, I, I suppose like uh, that makes sense because like a, a cockadoodle do and an alarm, alarm is like a is a is a sort of siren sound. An alarm, so, alarm. Like, yeah, an alarm. That? Yeah, well, I think alarm does come from alarm, like in right. Shakespeare, when they go sound alarms. That specifically means like oh. the enemy's coming. So a cock alarm. <laughs> it's a cock alarm. <laughs> we can all fucking do with an alarm. Hello, here we come. If only they did. If only they came like with a bell. <laughs> Like or some kind of like loud sound going cock incoming, <laughs> cock incoming. Can you imagine that? Like, like, you know, well, a... actually, and then you. But that's, <laughs> that's what it is. The cock alarm is that sentence. Well, actually, I think you'll find fuck off, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> well, actually, so, it's oh, funny. Nah. Imagine nightclubs. How many bells would be going off? <laughs> be like a Morris dancing <laughs> convention. That's why they wear the bells. That's it. It all makes sense. It all makes sense. You know, how often do Morris dancers come up in that discussion? I Far too much. Disproportionate. Far more than in my regular life. Yeah. And I used to live in Sussex where they had a, a convention once a fucking year, mate. Yeah, in Rochester they used to have a Morris dancing festival. Did you get the swamp people come to yours? Uh, yeah. 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 I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sarah, our alarm should ring when a cock is making its way towards you in both contexts, <laughs> frankly, because no one likes to be surprised by either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> the, things, the things you learn. God, oh, sorry. we killed Philip. Sorry, sorry. Our sorry. alarm's going to try and jump out yeah. of the body. <sighs> Um, but why so, do Brits always make fun of, fun of their Morris dancers? Well, I mean, we're not making well, we're I mean, fun of I'm everything. Not, like, yeah, I was going to say, we, we, we make sure. fun of everything. We to answer that question. We make fun of yeah, our food. Yeah, we do make fun of everything. Yeah, yeah that's, right. that's that's when it's wet and cold, you've got nothing else to do. You've got to try and laugh at everything, otherwise also, you'll jump off a bridge. We also <laughs> don't really understand them. <laughs> and then when we found out that it's a fertility dance and they look the most stupid <laughs> thing, like, how is that a fertility dance? It's the, of... it's the bloody bells. Um, uh, bells. a rat bow, a rat bow. Swamp people. There's there's a breed of Morris dancer that wears like a kind of raggy suit. Oh, is... A raggy is it a suit. Green man. Is it like a link back to the Green Man? 
oh, that could be what they're going for. Now you think about it. I just, yeah. I thought it was Stig of the Dump. I was like, that's a weird flex. <laughs> Why are they being Stig that of the Dump? A, can I but, just say, I hate to be like a book, but that is a shit book. <laughs> Stig of the Dump? I love it. A shit, shit. If, if you ever want to like lose several hours of your life for no good reason, read that book. Fucking hell. I mean, it's awful. Claire, they are our history, but they're also our, our present. Um, and we make fun of loads of stuff that's our history. We this this whole series of deceased gits has included some of our most prestigious monarchs and people. Mm. Best believe they have all had the piss well and truly ripped out of them. Because <laughs> um, because we all go to the toilet the same way, and we and we all have some gentle mocking that can be sent our way. And and if I would never be rude to a Morris dancer, I would always be patient. <laughs> While they were morrising at me, patient. while they well, while they were patiently banging their sticks, cockalorum with his yeah. gel on. Yeah, but um, it's it's in the same way. I I did when you're at school. I mean, is this the case? Did you did you ladies both do this in summer? I doubt it. Country dancing. <laughs> No, is that quite... country, they clearly only do country dancing in London. <laughs> so we used to do like country dancing like maypole dancing well, and kind of like comes you know the maypole yeah f- flapping and stuff like and it's just maypole danced actually mm. and it's great fun but it's also fundamentally quite weird and i just i find generally joining i'm not a joiner i'm not a team sports kind of a person and i'm certainly not a team <laughs> dance kind of a person <laughs> hands weird. up <laughs> hands up who pay money to watch cat maypole dance in the audience, raise your hands. <laughs> is, me, you... is that a deliberate misspelling? <laughs> <laughs> if you're not on the YouTubes, or you can't see the comments. <laughs> is she just did know. Esme has put, I grew up in Norfolk, UK. We did country dancing, except she, she missed the O. <laughs> Out of country. <laughs> I won't say that word. So if you're not sure, write it down and cross the O out. <laughs> see, oh, see what you're left with. Oh, Christ. Oh, God. I, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was intentional. No, it was intentional. <laughs> oh, God. Fair. <laughs> Uh, pretty pit catch do square dancing in Seattle. I see. I, I I would imagine that square dancing and country dancing must come from a similar route. They must. Yeah, <laughs> Jonas has put. I'm very confused right now. I'm <laughs> like, so are we. At this point, so are we. <laughs> oh, uh, here on YouTube, quite a lot of people putting their hands up for cat to. Um, yeah. Um, Art Bros is a maypole is also. I can see a it jingle is. Yeah, dance it's dancing. Maypole is another sort of symbol of fertility type thing, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? Isn't that in that film Midsummer? That they <laughs> made some dance in that. I don't. I don't know. Claire just, says mm. it would be one of the greatest moments of 2023 if you did that. <laughs> is there any way you can make this a sponsored event? Look, for right, something you, really I tell spring. you what. We'll go out to the field. You find a nice big pole and you erect it. And then I'll tie it around in a ribbon. We could fit. Uh, we could fit a maypole in the Winnebago. Actually, we. <laughs> I mean, a Winnebago is a big, but I mean, is there really room for a? Maypole? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, is, yeah, is, is, is yeah, it yeah. also? I think there's maypoles yeah. in Wickham Band too. You could have like a pole, so you could do pole dancing on it. No, only you can do pole dancing. Well, it's been a while. I'm not sure I could haul my ass up there anymore. If I'm being well, completely I, I mean. Honest. Does anyone want me to find out? I tell you what, I'll do the delicate lady maypole dance, and uh, we'll put Catherine in a g-string and make her swing around the pole <laughs> in the Winnebago. No one wants to see me in it. I didn't used to do it in a g-string. I just like you to do point now. that out. You do now. But I didn't do it in a g-string. <laughs> Fucking hell, fire! Living an eclectic life. Thank you, Mariah. Death Thank you. I try. Mariah I try. Just did something nice to me, unlike the rest of you too. You two need a cat, you need a bell attached to you. Look, I want to see your bottom. That's a lovely thing. Your juicy caboose. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Archie Rich used to do maypole dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline, you find a big pole and I'll erect it. 
I mean, That's, I'm a specialist <laughs> in big erections. <laughs> I think some of you have heard this say before. Well, I'll say this before. They've we made loads and loads of money off of had, and we were looking for investment projects. We're going to start a scaffolding company it's called Perfect Direction. <laughs> So if there's anybody out there that's a builder that might like, you know. A perfect direction. <laughs> Maybe you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Let's know. Okay. Right. Come on now. Get your shit I together. Mean, as diversions go, this one's been quite spectacular. Right. Reroute. Reroute. John okay. John Knox. <laughs> he would be livid. He would literally burn oh, the three of us God. as he'd witches. He'd have exploded. Probably not witches. <laughs> Oh, dear. Right. OK, so Philippa mentioned the trumpeting earlier. But before I get <laughs> talking about that, I want to talk about um, a slightly earlier publication. So I wasn't I, I changed my mind about what order to do this thing. Um, but in um, 1554, he actually published something a um, little bit different. And let me find where I have written it down now. It was called A Faithful Admonition to the professors of God's truth in England. So he's all one for the catchy titles. Yeah, he likes the short titles. He, 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 yeah. he, he got like, better, I think. I think <laughs> he got better. <laughs> so, um, so he was talking about so what Mary the First had established, where she'd come back in and she was starting the Counter Reformation. He was going, no, you know, the Catholic business. We were all over that sort of stuff, and she was trying to reverse it as Cat instead. He'd been very involved with Protestantism under and her brother Edward, and he was very upset about this move back to Rome. So this is kind of what this was about, and um, he he did not like her. He was not not <laughs> nothing. He called her the incestuous bastard. And then when she married Philip of Spain, he lost his shit about that as well. Mind you, so did lots of people, if mm, we're being fair. fair. He wasn't on his own, yeah. He was, he was, he was not alone. Was. Basically, the only person that was happy about that was her, basically. Yeah. He, he wasn't even he happy. Wasn't he wasn't happy even happy. No one was happy. She was literally the only person in the world pleased with that decision. Anyway, he said he was. she was worse than Jezebel. Who had never Jesus. <laughs> strong words? Who <laughs> had? This is so unfortunate. <laughs> particularly bearing in mind the, the conversation of about ninety seconds ago, she was worse than Jezebel, who had never erected half as many gallows in Israel as in London alone. So Mary too being criticised for her massive erection. Uh, for her erections. <laughs> <laughs> for how many erections that she <laughs> and the damage that they'd done. Oh, You've got dangerous be erection. Yeah. Dangerous direction. I mean, Pretty Pink does point out that the marriage to Philip was incestuous. I mean, also, also you're wrong. That. You're not wrong. But they did have a very. They also had a quite an odd view of what incest was. Like, it was a bit. It was but a bit. Incest was all right if the Pope said so. Yes, mm. and he had to say so quite a few times. Pretty much every occasions. single time. <laughs> yeah, pretty much every time. Do you think you have like now? Now, yes, hundred letters. Yeah, copy and paste to form off. It, it was also dry it was less incestuous than the other marriage that was planned for her, which was with Philip's dad, who was her first cousin. <laughs> what? Um, and it was also less incestuous than the discussion that was apparently had that yes. maybe Henry would give up on the whole annulment thing if they could legitimise Henry Fitzroy to marry Mary. They are half siblings. Are we in? Ancient Egypt. <laughs> I wonder what the Pope would have said to that. I think. Well, I think Julian might have the been. Pope's got a line. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I, don't know. I think Julian's he would have signed point. off on it. Right price. Pope would say yes for the right price. Shall we write to the Vatican and ask the Pope's? No, let's not do that. <laughs> I want to. I want to ask. He's got a chest infection at the moment. Leave him right. alone. Most of us go him to and work. Me both. We've got a chest. Yeah, I'll just yeah. say flippers at work with a chest infection. I'm, I'm here sniffing and coughing at you. Sympathy for this at all. <laughs> yeah. Really? It's got man flu. Anyway, yeah, um, got she, had, she had spilt the blood of the innocent, so she was a terrible, awful person. Um, Stephen Gardner, Bishop of Winchester, was sort of working under Mary at the time. He called him the wolf, and all her other counsellors were the sons of the devil. Oh, bloody Strong hell. words. Didn't Strong hold words. back. Didn't hold yes. back today. However, Cramner, he was he loved a bit of Thomas Cramner, as you can imagine. Obviously, he was the Reverend Father. So there you go. So that was kind. Of, this is the first pamphlet where he's kind of going. This woman is awful. She's evil. She's this, this, that, and all the rest of it. So we see this writing initially. So we we're, we're getting this thing, but the, the one that we're going for, 
Uh, yes, the, uh, Philippa has mentioned the first blast of the trumpet against the monstrous regiment of women. So he's published this in mm. 1558, which is the last year, so the, the year, of course, that Mary the first passes away. And so you will see how this slightly bites him in the arse fairly mm. shortly. But anyway, this was a condemnation of women who rule as monarchs and who work in the political sphere. And so this is one of the things that why you initially think, oh, what a git. But I'm going to give this a little bit of context when I've talked to you about it. But he said that women were inherently weak and that their rule is unnatural. And they, it's a monstrous deviation from the traditional patriarchal order. And so basically it, it, it's a really bad idea. And the central argument is that uh, women's inherent inferiority um, and the belief that women just cannot rule effectively um, because they are emotionally stable and they just entirely lack reason. So, you know, there's, I'm convinced. Um, and he used a number of biblical passages to support this. For example, like Eve was a, created to help Adam and look what she did. First woman, look what a letdown she was. I mean, <laughs> look what she problem. Did. She, she was a problem before she, she even started. Problem. Eve was a problem. She's Timmy's mum. <laughs> <laughs> um, a number of not biblically. Not... <laughs> That's another story. Well, no, it is. But yeah, it's a number of passages from the New Testament. So we've got both. We've got both Bibles going on here, um, saying about how women shouldn't speak in public and exercise authority over men. And women's mm. rule is the result of sin and corruption of man, mm. and is a clear sign of God's wrath. So God is cross yeah. at this point. Very Just cross. for a change. Anyway, so he uses very strong it's language, lots of, he's cross all the time, very, <laughs> lots of imagery, so he's very strong language, very vivid, you know, when he, so he's, he's doing this video, he said he liked a good sermon, and when he did it, he went for it wholeheartedly, fire and brimstone, when they say fire and brimstone, he got yeah. over his stage for it, he did, quite quickly, anyway, so women were always a monstrous, he likened their rule to the disorder of a commonwealth, so he'd have probably, he'd have had a nice chat with them, Oliver. Well, that would have been an interesting conversation. Women are weak, frail, impatient, feeble, foolish, and more cruel than tyrants. So what he's done is he's created this really sort of a really negative relationship between gender and power. And this is what he's set up. Women should not be able to hold position of power. They are naturally weaker and less capable. And the quote is, nature hath willed the almighty, um, hath obedient and the imperfection of their sex doth declare that women were not made to rule and bear empire over man. So your first thought is, wow, what a misogynist, what a, you know, like, and I get that. But first of all, we, I know we can't always use this as an excuse. We've had discussion before, but he was by far not the only person that thought this mm. from mm. any level of the social strata. He was mm. not on his own in doing this. This was very much a sort of fairly firm belief. Nobody really wanted a woman to be queen. Rather than even women queen. didn't want even, women to even be Even women queen. didn't believe yeah. that they should yeah. be the ruler. So this wasn't... So in that respect, he he wasn't being in sort of as unreasonable as it appears on the surface. Now, my other part of the argument to kind of let him off this a bit was he's come across two women rulers at this stage. One is Mary of Guise, who has basically had a very large part in getting him put on a galley for 19 months and rowing himself to death for part mm. of, of mm. the punishment for a murder that he wasn't really involved in. So that's his first example of a woman being a ruler. And his other is Mary the First, who he has basically had to fuck off onto the continent to avoid. So she doesn't burn alive him and all his friends. Now, in fairness, if that was my two examples of a particular <laughs> thing... I'd not be down with that either. I'd be thinking this sounds like bullshit. And I'm going to go and write a pamphlet stroke Facebook post because that's kind of the equivalent these days about <laughs> how pollocks that is. And I don't see it working. So I'm coming out of defence in defence of John Knox about this, if, if I'm being completely honest, which might not be very popular. The one thing you will have to say was Philippa talked about his movements sort of across the channel and backwards and forwards into the UK from Scotland to the UK for England and Scotland and actually at different points when he leaves Geneva because Mary dies to come back and when he's then he goes to Scotland because he's been in Berwick upon Tweed to marry his first wife the people in Scotland want him back the people in England want him back the people in Geneva want him back so if this guy is so all right the Catholics don't like him but if this guy is so fundamentally awful in so many capacities why does everybody see the value in what he can do and what so yeah the catholics hate him but he's he's got a lot 
going in his favour. Like, there are riots and things that Philippa is saying, but they're not necessarily down to him. The murder of the Cardinal was not down to him. So he's associated with these things, or a git. But how much can we lay this sort of gittishness at his door? I, I'm not particularly sure that we can if I'm being completely honest. Now, this is a very interesting thing about Mary. When he had, there was this big um, thing with, when he was with Mary at Holyrood Palace in Edinburgh, and she was trying to have him charged with heresy. And he said that, she said that he'd instructed people to keep religion, a, a religion that was forbidden by the state. And so he transgressed a command of God uh, which requires that subjects obey their princes. So what she was saying was, you know, you are speaking at you by saying to people, you must, you know, you should follow a different religion. You are saying they should speak against me because I'm saying, you know, we're a Catholic country and this is how we should live our lives. And so you are going against God because God has chosen me to rule. And he countered, and this is quite clever, his counter argument was that right religion receives its um, origin, its original strength and authority not from wealthy princes, but from eternal God alone. So he's saying so what, what you, the reformers are saying, you know, you're here on earth, but you're not God. You shouldn't be the one dictating to us how we worship God. Only that, only God, the divine, the almighty can do that himself. It is not your place or your position to tell us and punish us for not doing it the way you as one individual believe that we should. It's not much you can say that really, is there? Well, she did. Okay. Bit of a row, you know, didn't go down too well. And that's, um, and then quote, he wrote something called On Rebellion, page 190, 178, if anyone's interested. And so, madam, ye may perceive that subjects are not bound to the religion of their princes, albeit they are commanded to give them obedience. Anyway, so he's not, oh, he's not happy. Mary of Guise, Mary Queen of Scots, Mary the First, he writes all this stuff because he doesn't believe. Anyway, so this is kind of based, isn't it, on the fact that all these women are Catholics. Mm. So Mary the First dies. Elizabeth the First. She's a Protestant. She's going to counter the counter-reformation. This is amazing. Off he goes. Oh, I'm going to have a nice chat with this woman. She's like, yeah, but you wrote something saying that all women rulers are shit. So actually, you have shot yourself right in the arse because mm. I don't like you. He apparently was quite surprised she didn't like him. I mean, I'm... He was a quite an intelligent man. So the fact that this came as a shock is a shock. If <laughs> anyway, in the, the fact that he day, said that this was the first blast of the trumpet as well, does that just in there way? was further work? There was going to be like a sequel. Something else coming. <laughs> He's going to be trumpeting all over the shop. I mean, in <laughs> fairness, he would have hated Elizabeth's um, Catholicism, actually. Fair enough, actually. He would have hated mm. the Church of England under Elizabeth's governorship. So it's probably just as well, because if he had tried to preach the Church of England, those two would have come to blows as well. Well, I think what happened in the end was she was like, yeah, you're a whatever that word that Philippa said earlier was. She knew it was coming because she could hear the bells. She's a, you're a cockaleaky. Cockalorum. Yeah, Cockalorum. Cockaleaky. Cockaleaky. The horse was coming. She could hear the bells from that you have to wear and you're a bit of a cock. Anyway, she didn't like him, but she stood by the Protestant cause. And obviously he, he was essentially the Scottish Reformation, really, at that point. Um, so, and obviously she had issues with Mary, Queen of Scots and her counsellors. So it made sense for her to sort of lend him his support, her support in terms of, of forwarding the Reformation. Um, so, yeah. And, and a big turning point really for him was in 1560 as well, because Mary of Guise, who had been acting as regent for Mary the First, mumps it. And so all that big support that she had keeping Scotland Catholic kind of melted away and the Scottish Protestantism was really able to fly from that point on, really. So, so yeah, it looks, look, there's a lot of sort of gittishness on the surface, but I'm, I'm struggling to find the underlying gittishness, the actual gittishness there, because... I can kind of, I'm not saying he wasn't a bit of a knob ever, and you have to do some quite big stuff in order to move and make a religious change of that huge capacity. But he wasn't off particularly himself calling for death. He didn't really cause the riots. He didn't murder anybody. And, yeah, he wrote this thing about women, but so did everybody else, which doesn't make it okay, but it was kind of the thought of the day. And, um, yeah, I, I think, understandably, 
every woman he'd ever known that was a ruler was called Mary and yeah. gave him shit. I'm just trying so, to think if any of us as women can actually sit here and say we are actually emotionally stable. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anybody's emotionally stable. No, they're no not. I, don't think it's, I don't think it's. I don't think it's based upon um, what genitals you have. I don't know anybody in the in the year of our Lord, twenty hundred and twenty three, mm. twenty thousand and twenty. I don't know anybody, not one singular fucker who is mentally and emotionally stable. We are all on the fucking verge. We're on the edge. <laughs> We're on the edge. <laughs> on the edge. Of glory. glory. <laughs> We're on the edge of the glory yeah. hole, looking <laughs> through the abyss. I'm <laughs> terrified. We're going to get poked in the eye. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what's going to be coming out that hole. Yeah, we do. <laughs> as long as it's not spotty. Oh, God. I was having this conversation with somebody today. Why would anybody want to be no. a gynecologist or no. work in an STD clinic? You've got to work. We're going to move on yeah. from that very quickly, but it was just a kind well, of a like. And also, Here's something I... podiatrists. Yeah, don't what? understand them no. either. Yeah, dentists. Yeah. Um, somebody written here. This is. I don't know what this is. So let me know if it's something we shouldn't Google. Pretty Pick says so. John Knox will be a red pill YouTuber, bro, today. Oh, I don't know which ones they are because there's red pill and blue pill. It's a matrix thing. It connects the matrix, and I'm not sure which one's which. But what one basically one's an incel. Uh, <laughs> oh. oh no, I think no, that's I a think, bit harsh. He's not no, that. Yeah, he wasn't. He's not no, that. he wasn't an incel yeah. at all. Yeah. No, he, he his his second wife. Who we've not like got Hadrian. Yet, sorry, Hadrian. Proctologists. They, they. I mean, he had he had a fair old number of kids. Um, his second wife was around about seventeen when they married. He was older um <laughs> but there's nothing to suggest that i that he was specifically horrible to all women or anything i think, like I think that. it's worth i think it's worth pointing out that like you have not only do you have the biblical connotations of like e daddy pig jezebel um <laughs> salome all of those people but you also have the medical understanding that women are physically weaker than men based mm -hmm. on humoral science um, oh no, red that, pillars are in cells, so we're good. Yeah, in that women are um, in humoral science improperly cooked men. We're half finished. We haven't been. Well, to be quite honest wounds. with you, I could not be bothered with the dangly bits. No, and the shaving. And the shaving. Well, then don't go chasing a pig around a field because apparently that's how your willy pops out, according to some medical textbook from fifteen hundreds. Um, okay. That's for another day. That's for another day. But I um, think also it's the case of like. Um, there is at this time the great chain of being and a sense that God's divine order is placed so that you know there's God and then the angels and then and then mankind and within mankind there is a social order and also an order that puts men above women adults above children that everybody has their place and to deviate yeah. from that is to create chaos and chaos mm -hmm. is what Satan wants so mm -hmm. those are the kind of implications and thus having a having a regnant female is borderline chaotic. It's worth pointing out that the Bible also says, woe upon thee, O lad, when thy king is a child. Mm. So this notion of topsy-turvy, child being in, in, mm. in a place of authority, woman being in a place of authority, is potentially a sign that God is displeased with the land. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, as, as, as he was saying. Mm. A couple of things I'd like to read out to you. Um, Ali, not Ali, different Ali. There's more than one Ali. Um, Ali Harrison, my ex's dad is a guy now. He said he would deliver our baby. Big no. Hard pass. Solid. Solid pass. Absolutely. No. Nope. I mean, no, even no, if no. you're close to your in-laws, there's close, and then you don't want your, you, you don't there's, want your father-in-law rummaging around in your beaver, do you? No. Let's be honest. Daddy Pig loves to dig. So your Hadwinnie Bago will have dancing poles, tea bags, and a glory hole. <laughs> only, only if you're very lucky. We should start if you want to raise the money for this. We should start taking advance bookings to spend the week on it because there's people yeah. that pay a lot Catherine, of money for that. That's how you end not up me. arrested. That's how we end up arrested. Not that me. I am like not we're soliciting. That I sounds like we're soliciting. Definitely not getting on that now. That's it. I'm, I'm Don't Google glory, glory Hole. Don't Google Glory Hole. Don't no. <laughs> no. And also not cottaging either. Not cottaging or glory hole. Don't do it. You didn't. You didn't mention glory holes. cottaging. No, I mean, nobody's like... mentioned cottaging. Jesus Glory Christ, holes, though. for fuck's sake. 
Yeah, yeah no, imagine sorry. it's a lot good. I'm going to assume the glory out comment is a lot Googleable no, on exactly. your last reaction. No, that's what I was saying. Don't Google glory- it. Doctor Hole Digger, the Greek gynecologist. I think that's worse than just straight. Well, Teddy Pink's going to start a GoFundMe. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, um, the leggy bits. Prob- oh no! Yeah, no. sorry. Yeah. Past right, yeah. Problems, um, the lady bits. <laughs> leggy. Oh, okay. Different. Different. <laughs> Different. We're back to gynecology again. PPP. Eating <laughs> Paige. <laughs> yeah, Esme, I think you could be right. Paige, we talk about glory holes way too much. Look. Grace <laughs> just said glory armor. The first time we've ever mentioned them. So I don't know the conversations you're having. I'm going to go around public toilets labeling every glory hole I find Gloriana, a la Grace <laughs> from now on. Um, a nice vacation <laughs> to a cozy cottage area sounds lovely. Whatever floats your boat, mate. Whatever chicken spickle. Um, use protection. <clears throat> Safety first. Safety first, always. No feet for free on the internet. Uh, what <laughs> are we doing? PPP. Pippity pippity pippoo. Okay. <coughs> um, Killing Philippa. Sorry. So, <laughs> a me, top, topical one this week. Topical, because it's something that we have spoken about. I was going to say in recent weeks, but many times. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so this is coming from a lady who wants to call herself Janet and uh, of course she does the best best medieval name yeah yeah Um, (laughs) I agree (laughs) no Janet um so anyway so she said that she's recently become a dear had I've recently become very interested in Tudor history I've been reading many books and watching many tv shows and I was inspired by a conversation with a friend the other day to look into my family tree. I decided that the best way to do this, with me being new to history, mm-hmm. would be to consult a genealogist. <sighs> Imagine mm-hmm. my utter joy, yeah. utter joy, uh-huh. at finding out that Anne Boleyn uh-huh. <laughs> was my 13 times great-grandmother. Fabulous. Of course it's Mazel tov. Um, I was wondering if there is any forums that I can share this news and find people (laughs) with similarly exciting stories. The best part of this story is is that it only cost me £3,000. I think you'll agree it was money well spent. Janet. Oh, Janet would like to know. I should have, I, I, I where, take, where I she can share this wondrous information oh. if she's got any suggestions and, and perhaps any tips for anybody out there I just want tracing to take their own Janet's genealogy little face in my hands and go my love there are so many places that can get you the help you desperately need <laughs> as long as it's free because you've just banged out you've three just, grand just, on you've just banged three grand but I tell you I tell you where we're not the place Julian, sorry, yeah, Julian's on not, Instagram going, the, I'm crying. We're, we're not the place, um, is here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who, who can't help you with it? Any of the three of us. Unless you want to give us three grand to tell you that you are your 13 times great-grandfather is Edward the First, because there is no doubt in my mind that some fucker, maybe one, maybe many, is genealoging at people yeah. and telling them this shit... <laughs> Staying. And they're making a fucking killing, and we're missing out. We, yeah, we should just set up our own. Gene- just yeah. lie to people. Just lie. lie. Yeah. Yes. Um. You would, and we'll, and we'll have a psychic hotline as well, as well as being your thirteen oh, times great grandmother, direct descendant of Anne Boleyn. You were also her in a past life. Definitely. You and the eighty-six thousand yeah. other people, but you took it in turns because that's only fair. <laughs> 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 that means there are reputable genealogists. <clears throat> no one wants. There to are rep- Yeah, I actually we saw one. Once and I know I was her because I don't like my neck being touched. Nor do I, mate. Well, I don't like my neck being touched. But I'm not fucking Anne Boleyn. I just don't like my neck being touched. It's, it's pretty weird. Really it's plenty of other people. Who've only got the clearly. Head off. It could have been. Yeah, clearly, Janet has through a few glory holes to get three k. <laughs> Oh, um, look, I, we are. I am taking the piss, but I just want to flag up that there are, of course, genealogists who do incredibly reputable work. There are clearly, though, some that 
Yeah, because they're fair. obviously, or it's one of these genealogy websites where it just throws up all sorts of nonsense that you need to like. It's a real hard profession. Yeah, um, it is. That takes an incredible amount of skill. Loads of people have the same fucking name. Records are spotty as shit. When somebody claims they've done their own family tree on ancestry or whatever and they've got back to 1100 i'm like okay babe <laughs> okay babe <laughs> we had no christening records record before uh well it, just about when, when was um shakespeare born because it was around about the year he was born wasn't it it was in yep. it, it was under like the cromwellian uh, as in thomas cromwell kind of admin side that we start getting church more regularizations yeah. yeah so there are no before that. You would have sons. If, if the first son, John, dies, the, the next son might be called, called John, John. Yeah. because that's the father's and his, name. And his son will be called John. Yeah. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. The same. So you get few names repeated a lot. Doesn't mean they're in a different generation. Could it actually be actual brothers. It, so on and so forth. There's a reason why English people don't tell you who their ancestors are in the 16th century, and it's because we know that we don't, we don't know. We don't know. We don't. Um, also, when you get to that level, when you're talking about your 13th time great-grandparent or whatever, there are A thousands of, of people on that level who you are related to who are literally not famous. It would be almost impossible, I think, when you're getting to like 13th, 14th, 15th time great-grandparent, to not have somebody of some significance would be the challenge. Yeah. That would be the challenge. Um, Hadrian Ryan says, how do you find a reputable one? There is. Now, I, 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 can't, I can't possibly speak to this, but I do know that there is like a, a association. Yes, there is. Chartering. Yes. Is, is it an association? The guild now. It's, I it's saw like, the it's Crimson like Curtal on Instagram. If she's still on Instagram, she knows what it is because she was going to go to them. An association of like chartered genealogists. There is a website where they are listed, where they have their qualifications. Um, it is something that it's not a protected title. That's the problem. Um, but it is something that you can have qualifications to help you with. So approaching them, the whatever they're called, there is one website. Go there. That's the place to go. Although, to be fair, if you want to just bung us three grand, we'll, um, we'll, tell you we'll, what we'll, actually, we'll, we'll come up with some story for you. Yeah, we, we're not guaranteeing any level of accuracy, but we'll give you a good yarn. We will... Yeah. We will Because we have noticed. We have people noticed, won't know. We? Just tell people that we're real actual, like, you know, these people know shit. Look at this wonderful history channel they've got. So they clearly yeah. know. Clearly know. Everything. So, we know everything. everything. Because we have noticed that when the, the, the 13th great grandparent thing has started to come up. So clearly someone's worked out that if they yeah. give a number to it, that gives it some kind of. And um, 13 authority. is the one that comes up a lot. It comes yeah, up a lot. And but I've noticed more recently, there are, they are people who are slightly off the really top notch scale. So it might be uh, someone who served Anne Boleyn or something like that. You know, it's like a, Hmm. They're linked. Yeah, a named person. A named person who but yeah. not a heavy hitter. Yeah. <laughs> I think someone's I think, doing that on purpose. I think it's a red flag when when somebody's going, my 13th time something. Because that, that comes up so much mm -hmm. that it mm. feels odd. Yeah. Odd. Janet, next time you want to blow three grand, please just buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash podcast. Because <laughs> <Are you>, uh, <laughs> what, what I can, I can tell you is what I can tell you well. is that you are not <laughs> direct descendant from Edward the Sixth. I mean, well done. Um, what, what, well done. what I've just told you for not three thousand pounds is entirely true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do what you can. Um, <laughs> I bet I better try and wrap this up. I've got yeah. to do the leggy bits. Leggy bits Ooh, in, leggy in bits. minus three minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's just let's just hop through. Like um, a big thing that Knox and Mary, Queen of Scots, fall out about is obviously going to be religion. Uh, he isn't about for the whole Darnley shenanigans. He's not. He's not actually there. However, he is, of course, aware at what's of what's happening. And when he comes back and he finds that, and after the death of Darnley, the murder of Darnley, after Mary's run off with his alleged murderer, he is very much in favour of Mary, Queen of Scots, being executed for it. He does call for that. Um, so it, 
we he Knox dies in 1572. We talked about how he has a second wife. The second wife is uh, a teenager. Um, I'm just trying to run through this in as quick a way as possible. In this period as well, there is going to be a heightening of anxiety about Roman Catholicism because on the continent, we do have the massacre at Paris, which is kind of contemporaneous mm -hmm. with the final moments of John Knox's life, the final years and months of his life. We have the, the lead up to the wars of religion in France, and we then also have the massacre at Paris. So all of a sudden, a kind of that sort of strident um, Calvinist faith looks very attractive, particularly in a Presbyterian system whereby the monarch is not the head of the church. The character and status of the Church of England is very much vacillating, depending upon who happens to be um, the monarch of the day. The Church of England of Henry VIII is markedly different from that of Edward. The Church of England is, of Elizabeth is markedly different to both Henry's and Edward's. I'm not going to count Mary's because it's 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 a different. It's once again trying to be a Roman Catholic Church, a presbytery does not function that way. James VI is not head of the Church of Scotland. He is a person who goes and worships and is admonished by the church in Scotland. <clears throat> and so when we think that that is the character of the church, the church that's set up and really bedded in by people like Knox, this is the church in which James VI is educated. I can imagine that when he gets to England, he's like, fuck me, hang on a minute. <laughs> hang on a fucking minute. This is what being in charge of the church looks like. Well, whoop de fucking do. Um, and <laughs> <clears throat> broadly speaking, the Stuarts do start to go a little bit off the boil when it comes in, in terms of religion. Religion is one of the things and religious faith and the, and particularly megalomania is something that really takes that dynasty off the boil. One has to wonder if there, <coughs> pardon me, if there had been an enforced presbytery in England as well, would it have looked quite the same way? We have uh, James the First of England, as he becomes, essentially really pushing this notion of a divine right of kings. His son buys that hook, line and sinker, as is evidenced by the apotheosis of James that we see in the in the ceiling of the banqueting house. Mm -hmm. There becomes this the kind of paired back borderline puritanical Calvinism of the presbyteries of Scotland, the Kirk, the Scots Kirk that is stripped away. This um, the question about what are sacraments and true Presbyterianism, there are there are two sacraments, is my understanding, and those sacraments are um, baptism and communion. Those are the sacraments. So when you start seeing a, a kind of more Catholicised Church of England, and let's be clear, Elizabeth's Church of England is very bells and smellsies to be Protestant. And today, the Anglican Church is very bells and smellsies when it to be a Protestant church. Um, and then you, when you have Charles who takes on this notion that he is almost semi-divine, that uh, idea of sort of touching for the king's evil, which for Protestants really and truly, most Protestants are going to see that as superstition. Um, and of course, this all leads to a impossible falling out between Charles I and his parliament, a parliament that is puritanical in a way that perhaps goes beyond what Knox is calling for. But let's be clear, it's more to that direction than the Church of England is. I think um, Knox, Cromwell, Oliver Cromwell uh, and Knox in that respect might have been kindred souls. I think it's just to hop back, I do you think one thing I meant wanted to say that's worth worth pointing out is at Knox's death, he hasn't made a fortune. Mm. He hasn't done it. He in fact he he leaves behind a fairly meagre amount. The wife and children he leaves behind are a struggle. 
there isn't money. He hasn't enriched himself through mm. this. I, I, I think he's a true believer. I think it, it, whether he's whether you want to call that a zealot is you, you pay your money and you take your choice. Of course, then we have the execution of the king. We have the protectorate. We see what a puritanical government without a, a kind of almost a, a balancing hand. It, it sort of goes the way of, you know, no fun, please. We're English. <laughs> Um, but but arguably the the legacy of Knox and and arg- and perhaps also the lack of Knox in England or the lack of, of presbytery in England, we see it play out time and again with the Stuart monarchs. There is some kind of generational rehashing because we then have Charles II, the Merry Monarch, um, who would I'm, I have no doubt would have made Knox's eyeball explode. <laughs> uh, uh, who has lots of children, none by his wife. His brother James publicly converts to the Roman Catholic faith, mm. marries a Catholic. We get the glorious revolution. At least, at least until the start of the House of Hanover and arguably beyond that, the legacy of Knox, the questions he asks and the questions he forces monarchs to confront about where the power lies about the notion of Presbyterians and the presbytery system and the power of kings. There is, to me, an essence in which a Presbyterian Kirk is the most open to a, to a more Republican system of governance because it, it pulls away the notion of the divinity of kings. And when the divinity of the monarch is taken away, when that shine is taken off, if you're not living in a democracy or certainly not in a constitutional monarchy, if that isn't something that you're setting up, then the only way to go is a republic, to my mind. Um, so I, I think for me, that's where that's where the legacy of Knox and also the spaces that Knox doesn't fully inhabit um, lies. So I think that's... That was very quick. I meant to say more, but that's what I've kind of got to. And I don't want to, I don't want to keep us here for another half an hour because I could. But I think his legacy is, is for good and for evil. And I think that conflicts that have continued to the present day, his hand is in those two. Mm. There's something I'd less like to add to that quickly. I mean, there's, there's a lot more of this stuff and I can't remember the detail because it was something I came across and I didn't have time to write it all down properly was that he was very instrumental wasn't he in allowing for saying to people that people should pick the people to be their preachers and, and you know that they, they should be able to sort of vote for that so it's almost sort of a, a, a early form of democracy really mm. you should have that dictated to you like the, by the monarch and everything and then by Rona I think people should be able to choose locally who to have to, in order to administer their religious bits and pieces and he also made sure that there was a school in every parish and so that that meant so many people and the bible was available in english and all these sort of things that you see time again and the level what that allowed people to do that you know that everyone could read everybody could, and that really accelerated scotland on the world stage and we see lots of lots of people who are philosophers like i think it was hume and several and lots of the great thinkers and all sorts of people were born really from the fact that they'd had that education inventors mm. there was quite a lot of people that they then weren't would, would not have had so it really was sort of quite revolutionary in a lot of capacities as well what, what those two what sounds quite simple well we need a school we need people to be able to you know choose the people who, who allow you know to help them worship monumental in terms of the, the people that brought forward and how it put Scotland on, on the world stage, really. Mm. So it's very, very far-reaching mm. in that capacity too. I think, and, and actually, on that, on that, on that point, the Presbyterian churches that exist around the world um, exist in places where Scottish people landed and planted colonies and um etc and did their kind of colonial stuff and it's very much a kind of there's a very similar character in the presbyterian churches because it's set down so clearly and it's not mm. a cult of personality mm. in which anglicanism to a certain degree was maybe is 
Uh, yeah, that's yeah. I, I think a lot of people think that the clarity in religion, religious practice, and worship would be advantageous. Mm, depends. Depends. Well, oh yeah, okay. Comes immovable. Comes immovable. Yeah, movable, yeah. Then, doesn't it? But certainly, it's it's sort of always a point point of disconsternation, isn't it? Anyway, I don't know about all of you, but I was really I'm, I'm always interested in all the things we talk about. But I really did find John Knox very, very, very interesting, and he's definitely somebody that I'm driven to 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 know more about. Yeah. So I think yeah. you found him interesting too. I'm interested in how he's going to score. I want to know how he's going to score. In the I'm, I'm, yeah. low. I think possibly low too. I, I think we might have managed to redeem a git um, here. I, maybe it depends whether how how offended you are by his um, trumpeting, but I think <laughs> I think Catherine's made a good. Yeah, you, um, you stood for him. It, yeah, good, a good, good, good arguments um, as, to, know, as like... to like where that came from, why he wrote it. Um, I don't and think like he would have written it. Pardon? Minimal hypocrisy. Yeah, uh, he exactly. Was, yeah, he, he was. Um, he was just a man of conviction. He completely, I think he was meaning well, you know, that he, mm, it came yeah. from a good place, I suppose, is what we would say yeah. now. And um, and it is interesting to think, would he have actually published that had Elizabeth already been on the throne? It feels like it was getting a bit personal. There's the three Marys, they're all Catholics. Like Catherine said, they're not great examples of what <laughs> happens. <laughs> you know, and, and you have to remember they haven't had a you know, female leadership is brand, brand new. And so mm -hmm. it is it is something that the Bible's teach them that they're I mean that they're, they're not going to someone uh, mentioned this earlier on my on my live earlier. They're not they're not going to church once a week at this point. Oh no, no. This is a daily thing. They they this is this is this is this is their life they 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 you know they mm. they really believe what they they this is absorbing everything they're told and then like you say they so 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 women are there and eh, they're not the best examples so yeah what you know it's it's not it's not i thought we were going to look at him and go oh misogynist he just doesn't like women and that clearly not really isn't the case that, is there? No. you know yeah. no Chrissy Pick says, I think he's, I think he's, yeah, come on words. I think he's still a git, but a very low ranking one, maybe even below Bruce. Ooh. I agree. Although Robert the Bruce's tomb or something did get smashed up in one of the riots, I think. Oh. But, oh. um. Might have um, him a little bit higher then, as soon as he, so, <laughs> he had a yeah, But that wasn't necessarily riot. his fault. Well. I don't know. But anyway, I've got a feeling that he's, he's definitely, is going to be in the bottom mm. three, and then it's got to be surely. It's well, we'll find nice out. Mm. We'll find out. How many anyway. of, of our roundup? How many have we done? We've got one more until roundup. Oh. Now, Philippa, ladies, we, well, ladies, week? we need to talk about next week off air and let everyone know what's happening because um, I will be uh, on tour. sabbatical. In situ, I'll be somewhere else. Uh, but to do with cat, so we'll have to see. Uh, it's not going to be. There's oh. not going to be a git next week. I don't think. Let's let's say there's not going to be a git. Because yeah, because I was supposed to be going and I can't go now. There probably won't be a git. Should we say no git? And shall we do? We could say no just, git. We could say just, no we'll, git. We'll tell you what we we'll we'll, we'll, we'll um, hang out with we'll hang out with Catherine, um, so she doesn't feel left out. We'll be doing something. Yeah. I don't even think we've got L. I think we need to think of an L, actually. So, any suggestions? No, we we've did. got one. We've got... We did. Yeah, oh, no, no, we, we have. Did. No, we have. Yeah, yes, we right. have. We've got one. We've got one. We, only, we only decided it about a week or so ago, didn't we? I remember that, yes. 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 Okay. Uh, what is in our link tree? <laughs> Oh, sorry. I was just reading Dorothy Mayfair's. Philippa said last week she's always at the bottom, which means John Knox can't be. And I'm not a git. That's right. That is true. So I'm not actually on we're the... We're uh, a little bit gitty. We're, we're a little, little bit gitty. Yeah. I'm not on the... Uh, we're not on the uh, git league table, List. though. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, so on our link tree is the link to our... Uh, <laughs> just, sorry. My brain just went completely. Uh, there's a link <laughs> to our sub stack, which is our little hub of uh things when we post things and maybe when we do extra things which is in 
in the pipeline okay. that's having uh, so the link to like this uh gets published onto our substack so if you aren't ever you know if you're not here for our lives but you want to make sure you get it sign up to our substack so if you go to our link tree which is on our bio and instagram uh and it should be on our link on youtube i can't remember uh then you can um just sign up for free and that means you get a notification when we post something um you can also buy us a coffee there at uh, or you can go straight to buymeacoffee.com forward slash had podcast uh which is of course the winnebago fund because we, <laughs> you know, we, we want to go to catherine we want to talk to catherine in a winnebago so our link tree is on our bio on Instagram. If you're following us on Instagram, thank you very much. You can find that there. Please also consider following us on YouTube, History After Dark. Please like, subscribe and hit the bell button so that every time this random stuff goes out, you will be sent a notification. <laughs> if you are only following us on YouTube, please consider following us on Instagram where it's history.after.dark where you get a little bit of extra content now and then. And you can also join our close friends. Although we've not been too active on close friends. We need to pick that up a bit. And join mm. our close friends which you can also do via buymeacoffee.com forward slash had podcast so surprise room next week we won't have one of them for a while have we yeah we might so, we might do a uh, and then the week after we're not surprise. here are we we're having easter break we're having a little break for a week yeah, yeah so in a couple so a little bit of a while till we get to the next git yeah, so git but it's going to be a good one i know what it is and it's going to be a, a doozy for loozy it is. It's mm. going to be quite a high score of that one, I think. It's going to be a heavy hitter. <laughs> I'm quite. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to that one. I have to say. Got a bent sword. So... Don't you? I'll tell you about that. Later. Right. Um, shall I... We're going to go now. Hear all about out. Philip's bent sword stories. Not but my yes. bent sword. <clears throat> anyway, yes. We'll see right. You next week. That is going to count us out. Are you ready, okay. Jean? In. Oh, you full named me. Don't do it, okay. I'm afraid. Um, a <laughs> three, a two, a one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>